So I thought I'd take a moment and kind of explain what I'm doing here. Um, if you go on Google Tenonizer, you will see exactly what this is. The guy that has these patented and sells them um, is asking a lot of money for them. And my brother builds this stuff, and so I'm just going to build him one. Now, I won't sell these because the guy did patent them. They are his idea, um, but I'm also not going to pay thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars plus shipping for something like this. It's kind of ridiculous. So um, what we're doing is we're going to be putting this, uh, what is it, a flange bearing, I guess, whatever, on the sides with this bar in the middle. But basically there'll be a nut that'll be welded onto here. And um, it'll receive this, which will screw in and out of it. And coming off of this will be a half inch rod that will basically pivot up and down. That's the whole point. There's a table saw blade that comes up under here and you can easily make your tendons that way. So um, what I just cut out and happened to, I thought I recorded it, but apparently not. Um, but I cut these pieces out because they're going to attach to this arm. I don't have a bit big enough to drill a hole in my inch and a quarter tubing. And besides, this is an inch and a quarter um, round bar, which is actually thicker than his uh, on the tenonizer, but that's all right. So I built this. Oh, look at that fit. That's the first time I tried it. It's a perfect fit. Um, basically, I'm going to uh, weld these kind of like a receiver arm and the inch and a quarter tubing will be welded inside of that. That's how I'm attaching it to this arm. And there's an arm right here that basically allows you to adjust the pivot point, the half inch rod that holds on to the lumber. Um, you can fine tune it up and down away from the blade to get your exact fit for your tenon if you would like. So anyway, this is exactly what I'm doing right now and see how it goes. So this side plate goes on, it mounts on the inside if you want to come in through the side and cut a different type of tenon. My brother probably never will do that. I think they're an uglier tenon anyway, but I figured, well, you know, I'm building it, I might as well. But um, hanging off of this plate, it should, co should come up at a 10 degree angle. At least that's the angle my brother determined that he wanted. So instead of fitting flat, it's going to just pitch up a little bit like this so that um, gives you more of a cupping shape on the tendon. And in order to get that 10 degrees, I ended up cutting these three tiny pieces. And what I plan on doing is resting. All right, take three. This mounting plate goes in here and it just holds the uh, dowel, lack of a better term, the steel rod um, at a certain angle. In order to achieve that angle, I just cut these three little wedges at 10 degrees. That's the angle that my brother said he thought it was at. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld that on with those wedges holding it in current position. about a six and a quarter inch piece of half inch um, cold rolled round bar and I tapered the one edge in preparation for welding I just did that by hand um, I do need to round the other edge and so um, what I've discovered in the past the easiest way to do this is just put it in a drill and go ahead and run it against these stones here I'm just going to round it off
That's all I needed to do. Now what I need to do is I need to take this and weld it on the end of this and have it straight. That's the hard part. I do have a square edge here, at least I think, but making sure it's square in every direction, that's the critical thing. And, and uh, I just need to make sure I do it right. Okay, change of plans. Instead of trying to get this on here straight, I'm just going to take this half inch by eight inch bolt and I'm going to cut off the head. I'll go ahead and round that and then I'll cut off. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to cut off the threads. Actually, I think I will. I think what I'll do is I'll cut off most of the threads, maybe two thirds of them. And then I will have a straight shaft that will be able to thread into this half inch nut. Now, what it's going to cause me to do is inside of here, I already welded a, a different size nut. And um, I think instead of taking that off, what I'll do is I'll just flip this around like this because it, it just needs to rotate within about, I don't know, 45 degrees. And so I think I'll weld this one on the back side of here and we should be good to go. So I'm just going to give a summary of what I've accomplished. Um, I was in editing the video and it's taking longer than I thought. There's just more date. There's just more information there than I had anticipated. So I think I'll break this up into two parts. This piece is almost done. There's a second piece that I need to build that kind of goes with this. Um, but let me just go ahead and cover what I was doing because I didn't explain it very well in the video and it's kind of hard to see where I was making it go so fast at 8x speed that uh, you couldn't see what was going on so I wanted this whole mechanism to be removable from this shaft and the reason for that is is if I ever need to take this apart um, and want to get to this flange bearing for instance then you know I would never be able to do it without 
cutting this off. And so in order to make it basically um, modular in the future in case I need to take it off for some reason, I wanted this piece removable. In addition, I can loosen these bolts, which are basically holding this top piece down um, into these arms, which have been drilled and tapped. And it just sandwiches down. You can see how I, the way I cut this on the top so that the uh, round bar actually protrudes above this piece here. So when I cinch these down, it just basically gives it a nice friction fit. That also makes this arm adjustable in relation to this, um, what would you want to call it, a stud or a dowel, steel dowel. And then we have this adjustable arm here. Basically, you can put the log in here and bring it down on the blade. Here's a positive stop to uh, make sure that you don't go further than you would like. And um, you can just continue to repeat this. This right here is a counterweight just to uh, prevent this from ever going down too far, like into the blade. Um, I'll let my brother worry about that if he wants to add more weight into it or whatnot. But So that's what this whole thing does. Basically, this arm doesn't have to move very far. Um, this piece will come off here and mount to this bracket, which actually turns and mounts in here, and then you can bring a log in from the side and do, cut a different type of tenon. And that's about it. I mean, it's, there's, it's pretty simple. This is for a 4-inch, um, I guess, shot back or exhaust to uh, suck out the wood chips. But that's the first part. Now... Um, the guy that built the original one of these, he has a way of mounting this to the table, and I really don't like it at all. Um, so what my brother and I decided to do is I think we're going to drill this with the 3 8 inch holes, and he'll drill and tap into his actual welding to or his uh, table saw and just use some machine screws and, and hold that down. I think that's a much better way of doing it. Um, the other guy's method, you don't have to actually drill and tap into the table, but um, you have one thing go wrong and you can start messing up equipment um, with his mounting method. So I think this is just going to be a, a safer way of doing that. So other than maybe drilling those holes, this piece is basically done, other than maybe paint too. Um, there, the other piece that I have to create is for making sure that... Um, the logs or whatever he mounts onto here are drilled center to center. And um, you drill it first before you ever put it onto this piece. This, this is the second piece that you piece of equipment that you put it on when cutting your tendons. The first piece is the one that makes sure you line everything up.